Today we're going to be doing Mohs surgery on a spot on the leg. And the reason we're doing Mohs on the leg is because this is a more aggressive type of cancer. It's called the basal squamous cell carcinoma. And I like people to understand what happens with Mohs surgery because people come in and they think they have this little dot and they're going to get it taken off and it's going to be just a small uh, scar. Uh, so I'm going to show you today why that necess isn't necessarily going to be the truth. Because when we start out with this small scar, first thing we're going to do is we're going to scrape the, uh, the area that we have. And what it does is it'll take off any of the cancer cells. And the reason these cancer cells just pop right off like that is because they don't adhere to each other like normal skin does. So you see when I scrape down here, nothing happens. But when I scrape here, we have a hole. So... Next thing we're going to do is we have to take some normal tissue around this spot in order to make sure we can uh, visualize whether there's still cancer or not. So we have to not only just take the hole, but we have to take normal skin in order to get a diagnosis that we're clear. So I'm just, you can see I'm just taking a tiny little bit of skin around it, but nonetheless, we went from a little spot to a bigger spot after we scraped it. Now we're going to go to an even bigger spot um, by taking out that additional tissue around it. And what we do is we bevel the edge here when we take the tissue. The reason we bevel the edge is that way we can lay it flat and um, we can look at every edge of the cancer. So you can see we started out with that tiny spot. We took out, then we, we uh, scraped the tiny spot, made it bigger. Now we have to take out normal tissue, which makes it even bigger. And now we have a bigger hole. Now when we go to close it, we, we have to make it three times longer than it is wide for it to close without bunching. So that means if we were able to close this now, the scar would be probably about that long. So it went from a tiny dot to a spot to a scar that long, just from that one stage. Now, when we look at this cancer underneath the microscope, we may find out that there's additional cancer, so we might have to take out a little bit more skin. So every time we take out a little bit more skin, it makes the scar a little bit longer. And I just read something, and I don't know if this is true, we have Dr. Ravi visiting us today, but for every millimeter we take out, it makes the scar 33% bigger or longer. Is yeah. that true? 33% longer with every millimeter we take out. So we want to, that's why we do this procedure. We want to minimize the scar and maximize the cure. So we take out tiny pieces so we can clear this cancer so she can go home with a confidence that she doesn't have cancer anymore. And now what we're gonna do is we're just gonna cauterize the area. And we do that's just, that's just to stop the bleeding. So now we wait while the techs process this tissue. So we're gonna give it to our Mohs tech. She'll freeze it and put it on a glass slide so we can look at it under the microscope to see indeed if we've cleared it or if we have to take more cancer. So our patient gets to wait now for, or relax, I like to say relax, not wait, for an hour while we process the skin. So we looked at the glass slide and we looked at the specimens and we found out that there's no more cancer. So congratulations. So now we get, what we get to do is we get to close up the site. Now when we do that, what we're gonna do is we wanna take this round circle and turn it into something that's gonna be as small as possible of a scar, um, but also look nice. Now in this situation, what we're gonna do is we're just gonna do what we call a simple closure. And that's where we're gonna cut out what we call dog ears on the sides. And um, we have to make it three times longer than it is wide. So when we pinch the, the hole together, it doesn't bunch like this, it just lies flat. So we'll be showing you that in a minute after the tray set up. So we are gonna do the closure now. And what I like to do, first of all, is I like to draw the line and it just tells us what direction we're gonna go. And we see we've got lots of movement here, so that's gonna be easy. We're gonna clean off the area with Hippocleanse. Hippocleanse is a great antiseptic that we're going to use. And the next thing we do is we just numb up the area. And we've already numbed her up so we know that she's not allergic to lidocaine. Yeah. So here comes the numbing. And we don't want to have any pain. So if you have any pain, just let us know. Yeah. Well, I can't even feel that, so it's probably still pretty numb. <laughs> I love it. Assuming. So thank you for letting us do this. Is there anything you want us to promote since you're on, going to be on TV? Do you want to support your business, your kids, anything, sporting teams or anything? I'm good. I'm good. Nothing? Nothing. Okay. So, well, thank you for supporting us and letting us film you. Absolutely. I really appreciate it. So, how's the numbing going? I can't even feel that. Good. I'm sure if watching it, but... Good. I'm glad. That gives me joy. Yeah. Last thing we want to do is hurt you. 
Okay, so I just need the drape, please. I know, it would have been a party. Yeah, she's done, she's done everything. <laughs> yeah, she's giving a shout out to Elaine, one of our nurse practitioners. Yeah, and then the blade, great. please. We love Elaine. You know, I got Elaine when I worked in San Francisco for six months. She was my nurse, uh, my medical assistant. She's been here for how long? Well, I think it's 18 years. Yeah. Okay, so now what we're going to do is we're going to cut out what we call Burroughs triangles. And these are these little triangles I'm making at the top. The reason we do this, as I said it earlier, is we want to make sure, we want to minimize um, the puckering of the hole. So if we just try to close it a bunch, but now that we've cut out these triangles, it won't bunch. And we talked about the size, how people come in with that little spot, and they're like, I don't understand why the scar is going to be so long. You're getting an idea right now. why it looks so big. So we start out with a tiny hole right here, and then we scraped it, it made the hole bigger, and then we cut around it so we could get some normal skin so we could make sure it's clear. And now we just cut out a little normal skin so that we can make it close without bunching. So the next step is to undermine, and that's where we just take this, and we just go underneath the tissue and try to loosen it up in the surrounding area. The reason we do this is so the tissue will slide together nicely. What do you need? Oh, thank you. And one of my favorite things I do is this is a tip I learned a long time ago. She doesn't have a lot of bleeding, so we really don't have to cauterize much. I take this and I'm just gonna bring it together with this towel clamp and that brings it together nicely. Now we're going to put it a little bit more, please. Yeah, keep going, keep going, keep going. Perfect. Thank you, Janaya. Mm -hmm. so now we put in buried sutures first, and these are the sutures that keep the skin edges together for an extended period of time. They, it takes six months before they fully dissolve. And one thing that can happen is you can get a spitting suture, which means in the next month or so, these st stitches might want to work their way out of the skin because they're considered foreign to the body. And flip, please. Janelle. And do you mind blotting? Thank you. So these are the buried sutures. And I'm going to show you guys something at the end here. Because we talked about cutting out a little normal skin so we don't have dog ears or bunching in the skin. We're going to have a little bit of that, but some of that resolves on its own, and particularly on the legs. Buried stitch. Did you see how I went into kind of a diagonal? That can actually create a little bit of movement there, so it may not be perfectly lined up, but we'll see. That looks good. There's a little bit of a bunch right there, so I'm going to just do a little bit more revision. This is what we call a dog ear. So I just extend the line a little bit to take care of that. And now we're putting some what I call simple interrupteds, or what everybody calls simple interrupteds. And what these do is they just, these just hold the skin edges together. And we keep these in for two weeks. Now, aftercare for a leg is a little bit more complicated than other areas. 
So with this, we want to keep your leg elevated as much as possible. So move around as much as you want to, okay. but um, when you're not moving, try to keep the leg elevated. Now, are, do you have any, do you have diabetes or anything like that? No. Any, okay. So we might give you antibiotics just to make sure it doesn't get infected because it's a lower leg. Okay. And circulation isn't quite as good. Now, do you have any compression stockings at home? No. Okay, I'd pick up a pair just because it really aids in the healing. Okay. And so let's give her doxycycline just to make sure it doesn't get infected. Thank you. If you have any problems with this, you can call us anytime and we'll take a look at it. So don't go to the emergency room or urgent care or anything like that. Okay. So you can just call us and just say you had a surgery and you need to see me. Okay, and that's all there is to this. Now, I'm gonna give you a blade and show you how to take out these sutures because she wants to do it on her own. She works in the healthcare field, so I don't mind. I can't get You will come back here and see us. Okay. All right, so what you'll do is you'll take this blade here, mm -hmm. just like that, and then you just will slide it under the knot with a bevel up, so you'll hold the knot with a pair of pickups Okay. Put this underneath and then slip it and it'll just come right out. Okay. Does that make sense? Yep. So you'll have these pickups. You'll hold this knot. These are uh, two forceps, so you can't do it. Get underneath there, lift it, and it'll just pull right out. Okay. Two weeks. If you have any questions, though, whether it's ready to go out, whether they're ready to come out or anything, though, let us know. Okay. Yeah, yeah. Um, is that going to like be painful later? It should be controlled with Tylenol and Motrin. If it's more painful than that, just let us know. Okay. Yeah. Perfect. Okay, you did great. You're our superstar. Yeah. So I want to see you back in six weeks just to see how it's healed okay. to make sure you like the way it looks. All right. Okay? okay. Thank you so much, and thank you for letting us film. Yeah. Thank you guys for tuning in.